Shneels Malocha Berak Aleph Halocha Aleph the Chapter One Halocha First Halocha Shlosh Mitzvah Zav Yisrael the Three Commandments that Klal Yisrael were commanded B'Shatzk Yisrael from the Oretz when they came into Eretz Yisrael. We go to the Pirush. The three mitzvahs were commanded when we came to Eretz Yisrael. The first one is Limnois Lehem Melach to appoint for themselves a king. Shenema. It says in Devarim seventeen fifteen. Place shall you place upon yourself a king. The second one is to destroy the seed of Amalek. Shanamat, it says in Devarim 25 19, destroy the, you shall destroy the uh, remnants of Amalek. And Shlish is the third one is to build a base on Migdosh, the temple. Shanamat, it says, the Sheikh Maiserishu. To his um, to his abode, you shall seek out the Bosa Shomi. You shall come there. Because the Mishnah cites Sanhedrin as the source of the above twenty B. Tanya, we learned. I read says three mitzvahs. Klai Yisrael were commanded when they came into Eretz Yisrael to give themselves a king, to destroy the seed of Amalek, and to build the temple. And I don't know which one has to be done first. When it says in the Pesach in Shmois 17, 16, case called Hashem Amorik, that a hand is on the chair of Hashem as to wage war against Amorik. This tells us that you're obligated to have a king before you wage war with Amalek, because Kisa, case, the Shir, is referring to the king, and it says in the Re'ayomim, Vayoshav Shloimei al Kisa Hashem Lamelech, and Shlomo sat on the throne of Hashem to be king, and still I don't know if the building of the temple is precedes this, or the destruction of the seed of Amalek, when it says in Dvorim 12.10, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give you peace from all of your enemies from around you. And then afterwards it says, Amok, and it shall be the place which God shall choose to have his name dwell there, which is the Temple Mount. And that's the base of the Temple. And thus we see that the king has to be first and he precedes the destruction of the of of the seed of Amalek, after the, their destruction, he's obligated to build it, the uh, temple. So you have king, destruction of Amalek, and then temple. And by David, we also find in Shmuel 2 7a, and was when Amalek was sitting in his home, and I coached who gave him peace from all of his enemy, uh, enemies from around him. And it says in the second post, Amalek said to Nosan, I love me, seeing that I see sit in the house of cedars, and the the Ark of the Covenant of Hashem sits behind curtains. So we see that he wanted to build a base Amidosh only after when he had a peace from his enemies. Rashi explains that you have to have these two mitzvahs. It has to be done in the order when you come into Eretz Yisrael. All of them, by them, all of them, it says Yerusha inheritance and Yeshiva and dwelling. And when it says by the king, it says in 1715, and you shall inherit and you shall dwell there. And then you shall say, I wish, desire a king. When it comes to the waging war with Amalek, it says, and it shall be when Hashem shall give you peace from all of your enemies from around you in the land which God gives you as an inheritance to inherit, then you shall destroy the remnant of, Am of Amalek. And by the building of Esam Bechira, it says in Torah 12, 10, and you dwell in the land which God inherits to you. As we see that the mitzvah is to keep, uh, to establish these mitzvahs, the obligation to do so is only after you've inherited and dwelt, dwelled in Eretz Yisrael. In Kiddushin it says, Tanavei Avi Shmuel, Avi Shmuel learned, since it says, 
that you shall come without any clarification that it says when you shall come to Eretz Yisrael and the Pesach specifies by one of them that the intent is means whenever you come there after you've inherited and dwelled there so too everything refers when you shall come means after you've inherited and dwell, are dwelling there Rashi explains since it was specified by one of them and because of where is that one? By, by King it says in Dvorim 1715. You shall inherit and you shall dwell there. And you'll say, I want, I want, desire a king. So we see that after inheriting and dwelling, then we have to appoint a king as the guest of Mishnah writes. And therefore, all of the commandments to destroy Amalek and to create the base of Migdosh are after we inherit and dwell. Even though the Raman writes that when it came to Eretz Yisrael, it would mean even before dwelling and uh, inheriting and, and dwelling, the obligation is only after the 14 years that are called the years of conquest and of inheritance and dwelling. That when they went into Eretz Yisrael, there was seven years of war and until they conquered Israel, and then another seven years until they divide, divided Eretz Yisrael to the tribes. Even though the Ramam writes that when he came into Eretz Yisrael, it means before, it's only after the 14 years. Balaturim writes, they were commanded to erase Amalek immediately when they came into Eretz Yisrael. And also the Kara Kemach, Rabbeinu Bachai, writes, it would seem his text in the Gemara is, in, is that they were commanded right away. However, the Ramam doesn't write immediately. Yeah, but the case of Mishnah explains that it means after, uh, after inheritance and dwelling. There are those later commentaries who infer from the Sifri in Dvorim 1715 that they, it's a disagreement with the Gemara and Kedushan 37b because it says to the mitzvah that, as, that I told you with regard to being as a reward, you'll be able to enter into Israel. It seems that the commandment to establish a king is before even they enter into Israel. The Malam explains <coughs> the, that the intent of this postic is that they're obligated to establish a king only after dwelling, inheritance and dwelling. And the Sifri are just words of Agoda. That the mitzvah, this mitzvah is very great because of the desire to keep it before the time of the mitzvah, HaKadosh Baruch will help you to inherit the earth, the land of Eretz Yisrael, and to dwell there, in order to be able to do the mitzvah, because that's what you want to do. The Tzavi Yisrael, Eklai Yisrael were commanded, and we find Sanhedrin 20b, that these mitzvahs are not an obligation on the individual. They're an obligation on the com communal, the entire com community. <coughs> we find the same mitzvahs. And when you look at these mitzvahs, you'll find mitzvahs that are an obligation on the community, not on every individual, like building the base of Pshira and keep and uh, establishing a king and cutting off the seed of Amalek. Just one has to judge if the mitzvah is on the, on the uh, congregation, on the menu, or on the king. Because by the base of Migdosh, the Redak points out that on the king he has to command Klai Yisrael to build it. Ramban writes that the plague that took place in the days of David was a, was a punishment because they did not build the temple. The Aron Hashem went from a tent to tent like a uh, temporary person who dwells in the country. And the tribes did not, were not awakened to ask to build the house for Hashem, even though it says in Devarim 11.5 that you should seek out his his uh, domain and come there. Until after many, many years, as we it says, it was when the, the king was in his house and Hashem gave the Torah uh, Melech peace from all those around, enemies around him. The king said to Nosem, the, the prophet, I dwell in the house of Cedar. And the king and Hashem's uh, ark dwells in 
in tents. Hashem did not permit Dovah to build a base on Mingdash, as we find the Bay Ayomen, because he, sp he spilled much blood, and therefore waited even after the Melech wanted to build it until the days of Shlomo Melech. And if Galiso would have wanted to do so, it would have done in the day of the days of the Shaftim, when Shaul was Melech or Dovid. David Amelech would not be the builder, but rather Klal Yisrael. But since they did not uh, look into it, only God was the one who was aroused to build a temple, and therefore it's called he's he's considered the builder. He continues to explain that the people, that the nation of Israel, were obligated to build a base on Migdash, not like the Radak, that is the obligation of the king, the obligation of the of the populace to destroy uh, Molech is found in Perik, in the fifth chapter. According to the Chinech in Mitzvah 604, the obligation is that every male in Klai Yisrael is obligated to destroy the seed the remnant of Amalek from this world. And the Uraim, however, writes that since we're obligated to uh, uh, place a king on us before we destroy Amalek, so it depends on the being a king, but the establishment of a king is definitely an obligation on the, on the populace. And we find Allah Gimel that you do not place a king only if Bezdin Sanhedrin uh, decides to do so and with a prophet. In the obligation of the Sibu to establish a king, the Raman writes to place upon themselves a king. It would mean seem that Yisrael established him. But the Gemara writes for them, meaning for themselves. That means that that uh, someone else has to point it for them and the populace has, has no participation in the actual establishment of who will be king. The Rambam uh, derives from the passages in Dvarim 1714 and you shall say, I, I shall place upon myself a king like all the other nations that are surround me. And it says, so, so, place shall you place upon yourself a king. That is a mitzvah that the people should come before the priests and before the Levites and the judges. That they are the Sanhedrin. They should say, we wish to have a, we desire a king. And, but they, can, they it's not within their abilities to establish a king. Because it says, Ashiv HaShem Lekech boy. Hashem is the one who chooses him. Hashem has to choose him through a prophet or through the Urim Vitumim that occurred in God of War. And the people should not place their own king. As it says, Ashi Yivcha, that he shall choose. Because the one who, who is king over Israel is his kingdom emanates from Hashem. And the concept of place you place upon yourself a king means that somebody who it will be it will be an edict from heaven they should be king he shall be king therefore according to Rama we see there's a mitzvah on the, on, the, on the people to come before the Sanhedrin and to say we wish to, we desire a king Lachamisha questions here the Rama learns the mitzvah of, be, of building the Temple Mount is from come to his abode and uh, uh, seek out his abode and come there and when it comes to the building of the, of the temple, he writes, "The Osuli Migdosh, and you shall make me a Migdosh. I shall dwell amongst you." So it should seem that who comes to who, and he explains that the psukim are stated in a, in a concept of a commandment. One is regarding the building of the Mishkon in the, in the desert, and the second one is to the Mishkon in Shiloh. Like Rashi says, Le sit le shu, the, uh, to his boat shall you seek out. That is Shiloh, in the Posuk, and the, the place that Akash Baruch will choose there, the Yerushu shall come, is talking about the Beis HaMikdash in Jerusalem. And not, it was not brought by the Rambam, because it's not a, it's stated in a, in a, in a, in a note of commandment. Just like it's a mitzvah to build a mishkan, it's a mitzvah to build a beis hamikdash. Therefore, he brings the pasuk, "Vasuli mikdash, 
where it says, they shall make for me a, a temple, and I shall dwell among them. That's why the Ram chooses the other person, because that's a, 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 a in the language of commandment. The smag, in, in the positive commandment 163, is of the opinion that the source of the mil the commandment to build a base Amigdosh is it shall be the place which Akash Baruch will choose. That's referring to the base Amigdosh and uh, the other posik of uh, you shall make for me a, a temple is referring only to the Mishkan, the tabernacle in the desert. Amin al Mizrahi explains that uh, uh, we uh, we judge the passages passage as if it would say, and to his abode you shall seek out. And according to him, we understand why the Rambam brings specifically the posuk that's talking about uh, the Beis Hamidrash and also Shiloi. And it says there, Tidrishu, you shall seek out, which is a commandment. Then we have to seek out how the base of English built speedily, hopefully in our days.